Dale Little back again with uh, Rescue American Ministries. Um, I guess you could title this message um, How to Lose Friends and um, Agitate People or something like that. Uh, that's probably about where it's going. <laughs> I hope not, but uh, it's not something I like to do. But that's uh, where it very well could go. I, I'm not out to um, vilify anybody, uh, but there is a movement that is just as much, I think, at fault of this nation, of America. Now, I'm here in Romania, but I can speak to issues in America. I, I keep up with things. There is a movement that I think is just as guilty of causing the downfall of this nation, the downward spiral, as those that practice, well, even witchcraft. Those that push abortion, transgenderism, homosexuality. Sex trafficking. You say, who, who, who in the world is this? Unfortunately, they are among us. I'll go. I'll stop short of saying that they're all wolves in sheep's clothing because I, I don't know individually who's what. But a lot of them may be. It's been propagated by many of those. By those who are ignorant of the scriptures. And so they make up their own. There are those who, instead of getting on their knees, crying out to God in repentance, think that they have the power to speak. They think they have the power. Well, they've got a God sitting up here. They're genie, basically. They speak, and he has to do what they say. You do not have that power. No one has that power. If that's the case, then you're not God He's not God, in other words. You're God, and he's your servant. That's exactly what it amounts to. If you control God, he is your servant, and you put yourself up as God. You better get hold of that. I'm sorry being upset, but when my nation's in trouble like this, and you got people like this go around teaching this garbage, Yes, it upsets me. Just speak. Yeah, I've been seeing this circulating. I, it's, and it's not in one place. I've seen it repeated over and over. So I'm not talking about one individual. And there, there again, I don't mean to talk about people. I talk about a I guess a doctrine that you'd call it, if you want to call it that, um, a teaching that is right out of hell. Why? Because it keeps people from doing the very thing God is trying to get us to do, and that is to repent. Well, why repent when I can just speak? Fear be gone. Holy Spirit come. Come on, Holy Spirit, you come. I just spoke, so you have to come. I speak life, not death, over the nation. You don't have that power. I'm sorry, you do not have that power. If you do, why are we in such a mess? 
If you have that power, you're a liar that you say that. Why has it happened? There are those when President Trump, after the, they were just before the election was settled. Now, I'm not <laughs> saying it's legitimate. Far from it. But there's a man in the White House that's not Donald Trump. Why didn't you just speak? That's what you were supposed to do. That's what I saw on Facebook. Just repeat after me. Just, just speak this, that Donald Trump's going to be in the White House another four years. Well, what happened? Well, maybe I should be like, do like Elijah with the prophets of Baal. And I'm not accusing you of being prophets of Baal, but a few of you may be. A few of the leaders of this stuff may be. I don't know. Well, if all this supposed to work, what happened? If you have that power, what happened? You have a bad day? Or you get tongue-tied? I mean, I don't see Donald Trump in the White House. Got another man all together. The enemy has no authority over me. Well, he may not have authority, but he's got some power. You better not underestimate him. And that's what a lot of people are doing. A lot of people assume that Satan, when he was defeated and kicked out of heaven, that he lost all of his powers, I guess. I, but, and that's, you know, that could be he lost some. I, I don't know. But if he did, who could? Just how much did he lose? How much did he keep? Does anybody know? I, I don't see a list anywhere in the Bible that tells us what he kept and what he didn't. Yes, I know he's not omnipresent. He's not omnipotent. He's not uh, omni-anything <laughs> except bad and evil and wicked. Look at James 5, 14 and 15. Let's see who's responsible here. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and he has committed if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Now, whose prayer is this talking about? Well, it's the prayer of the uh, elders. The elders are the one that was called. So if you want to accuse the person that's sick of not having enough faith, no, that's not. <laughs> if you prayed the prayer, you're the one that's supposed to have the faith. It's your faith that's failed if they fail to be healed. Quit trying, trying to put a guilt trip on other people. This comes out of all the same teaching and stuff, basically. In Mark chapter 2. Four men brought this man and carried him up on the roof because they couldn't get through the crowd to see Jesus. They took the roof up and laid him down through the roof. So what Jesus, what does it say in um, Mark 2, chapter 5, verse 5, excuse me. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic son, your sins are forgiven. Now I know that if to be forgiven sins, the paralytic had to ask and to be repentant. But Jesus says because of their faith, Those who let him down through the roof is, was the subject of that part there. Read it. They're the subject. Because of their faith, the man was healed. 
So what happened? What happened if Donald Trump's not in the White House? If you made the, the, the plea and it didn't happen, don't, you know, what's your excuse? Well, it's just too much to overcome. Uh, wait a minute, are you serving the Almighty God or who are you serving? You speak. Why don't you just go ahead and confess that you don't have any power other than what God, the power of God. The Word of God is powerful and sharper than a two edged sword. Your words don't mean anything. Your words are worthless. My words are worthless. But what God says is worth everything. Give me some scripture if you can prove me wrong. Let's look at Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities. Authorities? Authorities. That means... People that have authority? Is that what the word authorities means? Mm. Yeah, this might be a shocker to some of you, but you know, maybe in a sense, Satan does have a little bit of authority over us. He is the prince of this world. Now, I say a little bit. God is ultimately in charge. That's who we serve. He... He does not have authority as far as our um, eternal life, where we spend eternity. But maybe he does have a little authority. God gives, what, was that not what God gave Satan over Job? Was Gave him a little bit of authority to do certain things? In that sense, you, you follow what I'm saying and going with this. God gave Satan authority to take Job's family and do other things. Everything just about short of take, except for taking his life. So where do you get this that Satan has absolutely no authority? Well, if God gives him the authority to attack you, uh, to try your faith, and that's what it's meant for. It's not, not meant to drag you down. It's not meant to harm you. Maybe to chasten you. To stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities. Now, I didn't write this against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Wait a minute. Why do you need all this if, if you have the power in your tongue to speak? All you have to do is speak. Why did Paul go to all this trouble of saying you need all this armor? If all you got to do is just speak. You speak life over death. Well, who have you raised from the dead, dead lately? Hmm. You have life. Over, you have the power of life over death. You speak life over death. Who have you raised up? 
You don't have the power to raise anybody up. You don't have any power to raise the nation up to speak it, just to speak it. Over and over and over through the word of God, God says to repent and return to me. But no. Oh, wait a minute. Folks, don't, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't have to do all this repenting. That's useless. Let's just speak. Speak life. Show me, show me some results. Um, I don't know, maybe y'all been shut in for COVID for too long or something. Open up your window, look outside. Look at the world, the shape it's in right now. Is, it, is this the life you spoke in to the nation a couple of years ago or a year or so when Joe Biden went into the White House? What happened? What happened? Get off of this thing of just saying, well, we just speak life. I just speak life. God said that you better get on your knees, on your face before him. Confess your sins. And yes, it, it, what, what kind of sin? Well, for one thing, for setting yourself up as, as God... If you can say, go fear, Holy Spirit come. If you can command the Holy Spirit, instead of praying and making petition and asking, instead of demanding and just speaking, God doesn't owe you anything. And while this nation, America, continues its downward spiral, just continue to say the same old thing. Oh, just speak life, not death. Why do you need all this armor if that's the case? There to be a reason somewhere. Some, I, I wish somebody could explain that to me. Uh, all right, last place I want to go is Jeremiah. Chapter Now, all these people want to speak and they want God to hear. And I just dealt with that a little earlier today. I, um, where was it? Um, Zechariah. What did God say? Well, let's go look it up. Listen to this. The words of, that the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. Therefore, great anger came from the Lord of hosts. As I called, and they would not hear. As God called for repentance, and they would not hear, so they called, and I would not hear, says the Lord of hosts. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 12 and 13. 
So if you're not willing to do what God has asked to be needs to be done, repent. Then he's not going to hear your demands to fear be gone. Come Holy Spirit. Come on. You don't have that power. Don't follow anybody that does. Claims they do. My goodness. So what does Jeremiah have to say then? Let's read verse 21 out of chapter 23. I did not send the prophets yet they ran. I did not speak to them yet they prophesied. Listen, this, this is where I'm going. Let's forget, I mean, I'm, I don't necessarily forget about the prophets, but this doesn't have to be prophets. All those, a lot of those that claim to have the, this power of speaking uh, claim to be prophets. But I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words instead of proclaiming their words. Those are my words there. Excuse me. Uh, don't want to cause any confusion here. Let me back up. No, I'll try not to make any interjections there until we get through. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Okay, now I can say, interject what I said a while ago. If they had proclaimed my words instead of them proclaiming their words to me, Then they would have turned my people from their evil way. But that's not going to happen with what you're doing. What you're doing is speaking this junk. It's not turning anyone away. As a matter of fact, it just gives them the confidence, a false confidence. Hey, I spoke it, so hey, I'm going to sleep good tonight. Don't worry about anything. Well, that's, that's good until judgment comes because you didn't bring repentance. You didn't call God's people to repentance. You give them a false sense of security. Show me. I know you got all this stuff where you people talk about you got we as God's people have creative power in our tongues. Well, how about creating some wealth for me? I mean, you know, while you're at it, I, you know, new car, new bus uh, or, or van here in Romania we could use right now. Just uh, somebody out there just speak me one into existence. I, I mean, you know, that seems to be what you're saying. That's what some people believe. That's what they try to say. And then, of course, if they don't show up, that's going to be my fault because I didn't have faith to receive it. No, it's your fault for not having enough faith to create it. My, my, my. It's almost like... A, um, Years ago, you used to get these little crosses in the in the mail that, that people, organizations wanted me to send money for, and, and these crosses were supposed to bring me wealth. Um, I was supposed to send some money in, pay for the crosses, and they were supposed to provide me wealth and so much money to come in for me. And I said, you know, I wrote the people back. I said, well. And they talked about they had a limited number. I said, just, uh, you know, keep my cross there. You don't have to send it to me. 
just send me half the money. <laughs> and I said, we'll both be richer. Uh, you send me half the money that it brings in to you, and then you'll have your half plus my half, and I'll have my half. And so you'll have half that you wouldn't have had otherwise if you had just sent the cross to me. Of course, that's nonsense. Just as much nonsense as this stuff about having the power of the tongue and, and just speak certain things. There are too many people trying to do that today. God's calling the nation to repentance. And just like these false prophets here in Jeremiah said, oh, no, 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 everything's going to be okay. Just speak. We've spoken and fear, we spoke fear be gone and Holy Spirit or whatever come. God, Jehovah, come. And so everything's going to be okay now. Nebuchadnezzar's, yeah, they'll, they'll not be here. The, the Babylonians will not be here. That, no. That's what they were saying. It basically. No, it's not going to happen. Didn't matter how much Jeremiah, and Isaiah, and others, Ezekiel, uh, others before had talked about how God was going to judge that nation, and God judges nations. I've said that before. God judges individuals. God judges organizations, groups. God will judge nations, and he does. So my invitation is to repent of what you're doing. Repent of this nonsense before it's too late. Before, like Zephaniah said, or Zechariah said, that God said that he had spoken and people did not hear. They did not listen. And so when they called to me, then I didn't listen to them. You're not helping matters. What you're doing is doing nothing except giving people a false sense of security, making them feel good. Kind of like Belshazzar, he ordered all the utensils out of, the, the, out of their temple to bring to a drunken party. They brought the utensils from the um, temple there in Jerusalem that had been captured years earlier and had a drunken party using those utensils. Of course, then the handwriting came on the wall, wrote on the wall. So, the Bible says his knees began to shake together, his loins were loosed, joints were loosed. I think he fell to his knees. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. One day every knee will bow like that, I think. Either, you know, we come to him now in repentance and um, allow him to work in our lives or we reject him and when that day comes, we stand before him. Our knees are just going, <laughs> they're not going to hold us up. When, when man sees the awesome God that they tried to trivialize or ignore or even hate, then it's done. And he told the um, Remnants there at one time, not the remnants, but those, well, I guess in a sense they would, not the remnants that were left over the final captivity, but there were several captivities. Um, Babylon came and they took one group off the, to Babylon, 
And then when uh, uh, Babylon rebelled again, they came and carried more off captive. And then the third time they came and just destroyed the city, destroyed the uh, temple. And so uh, there was just nothing left. And all the while these people were prophesying peace and safety, peace and safety, it's all going to be okay. And that's what these people are doing. It's going around talking about these things, about uh, just speaking. You know, if you can do it, go ahead and do it. But there again, uh, maybe make your list. How many times have I prophesied? Uh, well, that's not exactly what you're doing. It may or may not be. How many times have you made statements and spoken and said, I speak this and not this? What percentage does that work for you? What does it brought for you and what does it cost you when you're wrong? And as many of you are. So you can go on and um, speak. God's calling for you to repent. God's pleading. If you want this country, you love this country, then it's time to repent. It's been, I've been preaching these messages for what? Two years now, I guess, maybe? Repentance is still not coming. People are still not seeing the real, the real need. And they're using every other excuse. There for a while, Q was keeping our attention drawn away from the reality of what we needed to be doing. We were going to take care of things physically somehow. And now it's gone, well, we just proclaim these things with our mouth and make them, we speak peace and we'll have peace. No, you get on your knees and bow down before an almighty God that's been calling for repentance and ask him to beg him to forgive you. And have mercy on our country and on us. And then we can see peace. Dale Little, Rescue American Ministries. So, as I said, probably one of these how to lose friends and Agitate people, irritate people, whatever. But you know what? I, and that's not what I want to do. That's not the reason I did this. I certainly don't want to lose friends. But if I do, I still have one. I stick with me closer than a brother. Dale Little, Rescue American Ministries.